Hey y'all, Coach and Fry here, guys. Stacy and Chris with me. Hey, hey y'all. And in this class, we're going to be talking about the lawless one. And this may be the revealing of the lawless one. We're coming out of the martyrdom of Isaiah. We'll talk about the lawless one in chapter two. But just to give a little background, Stacy, if you would, let's read through at least some of chapter one. And it came to pass in the 26th year of the reign of Hezekiah, king of Judah, that he called Manasseh his son. Now he was his only one, and he called him into the presence of Isaiah, the son of Amoz, the prophet, and into the presence of Joshab. And while he, Hezekiah, gave commands, Joshab, the son of Isaiah, standing by, Isaiah said to Hezekiah the king, but not in the presence of Manasseh, only did he say unto him, as the Lord liveth, whose name has not been sent into this world, and as the beloved of the Lord liveth, and as the spirit which speaketh in me liveth, all these commands and these words shall be made of none effect by Manasseh thy son. And through the agency of his hands, I shall depart mid the torture of my body. And Samuel Melchira shall serve Manasseh and execute all his desire and he shall become a follower of Belial rather than of me. And many in Jerusalem and in Judea he shall cause to abandon the true faith. And Belial shall dwell in Manasseh. And by his hands I shall be swan asunder. And when Hezekiah heard these words, he wept very bitterly and rent his garments. And placed earth upon his head and fell on his face. And Isaiah said unto him, the counsel of Samael against Manasseh is consummated. Naught shall evade thee. And on that day, Hezekiah resolved in his heart to slay Manasseh, his son. And Isaiah said to Hezekiah, The beloved hath made none affect thy design, and the purpose of thy heart shall not be accomplished. For with this calling have I been called, and I shall inherit the heritage of the beloved. So we're talking about King Hezekiah. This is Hezekiah of the Bible that brought the people back. He discovered the law. He's the one who had second Passover, united both Israel and Judah, Judah and Israel. Mm. He united them back together, the 10 tribes and the, the uh, two tribes. But then we're reading here that, who is this? His son, Manasseh. Right. Well, so his son, Manasseh, is what is saying about him? That he would undo all of it. So that's what happened then. So by the time we get down to King Zedekiah, they're back off track already. Mm -hmm. And so this is Manasseh who is doing his separating or was prophesied to do this separating, right? right? So I'm trying to paint a picture here of the timing of when this was. So you got King Hezekiah so many years before who's put the, key, the children back on track. They were off track, then you have King Hezekiah. And then they somehow get, or sometimes get back off track, and I believe we're reading here. And then we're gonna see them going into Babylon later on. So it was like a peak and then a fall off. All right, so now let's go on to chapter two. Like we said, the heart is, one of them to get some background here. All right. Chapter two. And it came to pass that after Hezekiah died, and Manasseh became king, that he did not remember the camp commands of Hezekiah his father, but forgot them. And Samuel abode in Manasseh and clung fast to him. So, like was told, you have Manasseh the son who has taken the kingdom off track. Forgotten the words of his grandfather. And Manasseh forsook the service of God of his father, and he served Satan and his angels and his powers. And he had turned aside the house of his father, which had been before the face of Hezekiah, the words of wisdom and from the service of God. Sounds like this Manasseh stopped doing the feast days and started doing the feast days of the pagans. Right. So read that first part again. And Manasseh forsook the service of the God of his father. That right there. The service of the God of his father is the feast days, the Sabbath days. Right. So he forsook those, just forgot about them. I think one of the important things is where it talks about in the previous chapter how 
Isaiah told Hezekiah that Manasseh would take on the spirit of Samael. And here in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Samael abode in Manasseh. Then it goes on to verse 2, how it said that Manasseh started serving Satan and his angels and his powers. So there you have the spirit you was talking about. His name is what? Samael Alchira. We have to look that up in the Hebrew, see what it means. But so here in chapter two, you have him living in the kingdom of Manasseh, like he's come to dwell there. It said he abode in Manasseh. So he came to abode there. He lived within Manasseh. He was a spirit. This is one of those spirits. In the in the in in Manasseh or in the town. I'm sorry, I can't see it. But in the Mana in he the spirit dwelt in the city. In Manasseh, Manasseh or the took person. on Manasseh took on the spirit of Samuel Manasseh himself. Wow. And said that in the previous chapter, it said that Samuel was going to serve Manasseh and execute all his desires through Manasseh. And so Manasseh got possessed by Samuel. And Manasseh forsook the service of the God of his father, and he served Satan and his angels and his powers. And he turned aside the house of his father, which had been before the face of Hezekiah, the words of wisdom and from the service of God. So Manasseh has taken on this spirit first, and now he's going on to separate himself from our father altogether. Is that how it's going? Right. Is it somehow saying that Manasseh is getting some type of power out of this. Is he he's serving Satan and all of this? What does it say he's getting? Or is it just the possession he's making him do? It? So far, it hasn't said what Manasseh's gained out of this. He hasn't. He hasn't. He isn't getting the power to the spirit. He's just using Manasseh to get the power to do what he wants to do. All right. And Manasseh is the king. All right. All right. Go ahead. And Manasseh turned aside his heart to serve Belial, or the angel of lawlessness. Who is the ruler of this world is Bel Liar, whose name is Ma Tambicus. And he delighted in Jerusalem because of Manasseh. And he made him strong in apostatizing Israel and in the lawlessness which was spread abroad in Jerusalem. So here Manasseh is being made strong by apostatizing. So it's become like a False prophet, or profitable false prophet, sounds like. But is this Bell liar the same as Bell? How do you spell it? B e l i a r. B a B B liar. A liar. It says, well, this is verse nine of chapter one. It says, and Samuel Malchira shall serve Manasseh and execute all his desires, and he shall become a follower of Bel Liar rather than me. And many in Jerusalem and in Judea he shall cause to abandon the true faith. And Bel Liar shall dwell in Manasseh, and by his hands I shall be swan asunder. So this seems to be saying that Bel Liar is also a spirit. Because it says once again that Bel Liar shall dwell in Manasseh. So what's the relationship then with Belair and Samuel? Seems like one is over the other, one is higher. Yeah, it seems like Belair may be in charge of yeah. Samuel. Okay, and so this spirit, uh, Samael, if I'm saying that right, is going to lead Manasseh into serving Belair. Giving him the power by being a apostatizer in the community, giving him power through that, and with the sole purpose of leading them to this Belial. Mm -hmm. So the whole community is going to go to Belial because he's the king, right? Right. And you know, if he's forsaking the feast days and start doing pagan holidays, meaning if not all of the kingdom is going to do that with him. But Manasseh himself is possessed by this spirit of Sam Samael. So he has the lowercase spirit. And he's about to drive the rest of the kingdom to the uppercase spirit, so to speak. All right, go ahead. 
And witchcraft and magic increased, and divination, augulation, and fornication and adultery, and the persecution of the righteous by Manasseh and Belchira and Tobiah the Canaanite, and John of Anatha, and by Zadok, the chief of the works. So now that Manasseh, possessed by his spirit, has driven the people to serve Belial, you have all of these things coming about. What does it say? Persecution of the righteous? What else, what else does it say right there? Witchcraft, magic, divination, fornication, and adultery. So all of this stuff happened after Hezekiah and before Babylon, before Nebuchadnezzar. Because the people, because the king, people forsook the feast days. This is what happens, okay? Now go ahead. And the rest of the acts, behold, they are written in the books of the kings of Judah and Israel. And when Isaiah, the soul of Amos, saw the lawlessness which was being perpetrated in Jerusalem, and the worship of Satan and his wantonness, he withdrew from Jerusalem and settled in Bethlehem of Judea. All right, so he's seen lawlessness come to the community. This is Isaiah. And there also, there was much lawlessness. And withdrawing from Bethlehem, he settled on a mountain in a desert place. And Machiah, the prophet, and the age, and Ananias, and Joel the Havoc, and his son Joad, Josab, and many of the faithful who believed in the ascension into heaven withdrew and settled on the mountain. So there's your lawlessness resulting from separating from the feast day. But notice that it's a spirit that's doing it. Right. No, it's right there in verse 4. You read verse 4. So you have Isaiah who is noticing a bunch of lawlessness now. But now go back to verse 4. And Manasseh turned aside his heart to sell, serve Belial for the angel of lawlessness who is the ruler of this world is Belial whose name is Matan Bukas. So there's the lawless one. That's the registered video title, the revelation of the lawless one. There he is. Who is Belial? I mean, do we hear about this? Belial. 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 Belial may be another pronunciation you hear. Mm -hmm. Sons of, maybe not. But Belial ends in an L, while this one ends in an R. So they're going to be different. One is a lesson and one is a head. So could it be that? Belial is the actual spirit, while Belial is what he's teaching people. Yeah, that's because that seems, yeah, because I, you can find Belial in the in the Bible, sons of Belial, all over the Bible. So we know that he's a ruling power, uh, because it seems to be saying that uh, Samael is under him, that's and we know that there are different. Um, I guess, Hi, oh, yeah, hierarchies in the spirit. So these are his minions. Those are his minions. All right. So the lawless one is the liar. And he got all of these minions that are driving him. And notice what they're doing. Taking away the feast days, bringing in um, witchcraft and magic, magic fornication. And fornication, which is serving of the other gods. What does it say? I know it talks in Revelations about the lawless one. Do you recall what it exactly saying? Because I think we were looking for a person. But, but I, know, I was thinking that it was talking about a person that was going to be urshing in. But here it's talking about, I guess, a spirit that will evolve within that person. I think you're talking about Second Thessalonians 2 and 3. Verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Is that who you're talking about? Mm -hmm, okay. So it's the apocalypse of Elijah that calls him the lawless one. But, yeah, same person, son of perdition. So 
the understanding is, is that you're going to have this spirit to take over a king and them to drive them towards the liar. Maybe one king, maybe several kings, but the lawless one himself is liar, the devil who are they serving. And then you just notice his acts. You know, you tell the fruit by the tree. You tell the tree by the fruit. So you look at, you know, what is he doing? Taking him away from the starting by taking him away from the feast days, from serving the Lord. Right. That was his first act. And you think by the time they got to Babylon, they had lost so much as far as the language is concerned, they lost so much as as far as the stars and you know how the celestial clock works, and lost so much as far as um, understanding of texts, even. It wasn't, a spirit, wasn't a person necessarily. People are being used, just like Manasseh was. You'll have a current day Manasseh too. But you'll have Manassehs all throughout history because the lawless one is the spirit that comes and takes them over. But that's what I got out of it. What do y'all get out of it? I just think that it was, um, I guess, good to understand how this here is a um, spirit that is overtaking um, this person. There's a lot to get out of it if you break it down. Um, because, like I said, I, I think uh, from my reading, we were probably I was probably looking for a person who was going to become the lawless one. And now we know that I guess it is a person, but he's being controlled um, and he's in the service of these spirits. Let me just read some of this. First, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter two. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of the Lord and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, but be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter as from us. But the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was set with you, I told you these things, and now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in this time. See, like Stacy said, we, we've all been thinking this was a person. But turns out it's going to be a person. Is this going to be a person with this spirit? So it could be any person or multiple people. It could be all of them at the same time. I guess that's why it labels them a beast instead of uh, naming the particular government because when you think about the fourth beast and how it spans 10 federated nations, yeah, it very well could be all of them. For the mystery of inequity does already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So this spirit is going to be taken out of the way. All of a sudden the lawless one goes away. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. It's talking about the pole shit. Right. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So that's talking about the spirit of, I think it was Samuel, who was controlling him. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them the strong delusion that they should believe a lie. But I believe you're right. This lawless one is, this, is the son of perdition. I believe they're connected. It would be interesting to know what that, um, did. because I've heard, I've seen somewhere, might have been in a book of demonology where it talks about Samuel. It would be interesting to see what his, his like, what territory of the spirit world that he's over. And go get the book. Samuel. 
man was a serpent who tempted Eve in the garden of paradise. He was an uncircumcised sex partner and husband Lilith and created with her a host of demons' children. Fearful that Samuel and Lilith would love the world, their offspring God castrated Samuel. When, when God ordered the patriarch Abraham to kill his son Isaac, Samuel tried to persuade Abraham not to do it in order to disobey God. When Abraham refused, Samuel went to Abraham's wife Sarah and took her Isaac and told her Isaac was sacrificed to God. The news of it killed her instantly. So you hear him all throughout history. The same dude been doing a bunch of stuff. He was in the garden. He was with. He killed um, Sarah. Demon of death. Demon of death. And it sounds like he destroys the people by separating them from our father. It says be liar is one of the most important and evil demons, who is deceptively beautiful in appearance and soft in voice, but full of treachery, recklessness, and lies. The 68 of the seven two spirits of Solomon. So he's covered in the book of the Testament of Solomon? Yeah, the Testament of Solomon. Eliab danced before King Solomon and was among the demons who worked under the king's command, ruled by Solomon's magical ring and the Dead Sea Scrolls. Eliab is described as the leader of the sons of darkness, the chief of all devils, dedicated to destruction. And they got him in the Quran and the different other books. Goliath's name is sometimes in synonymous for Satan or the Antichrist. In the Old Testament, the phrase, sons of Goliath, refers to worthlessness and recklessness. So it seems that it does seem to be having a connection. So it's the same as Belial. So when you look in the Bible, that's who you're going to find. They're serving Belial. Mm-hmm. Belial is in the Bible. <laughs> Belial. It said it's so. Uh, they pronounce it. It says the phonetic spelling is Belial, but the words, the letters that make up the word, ends in an R. So they're saying that it's spelled with an R, but how to pronounce it with an L? The transliteration ends in an R, but the phonetic spelling ends in an L. That's in the New Testament. That's in uh, 2 Corinthians 6 and 15. And what concord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? So those who are serving pagan holidays are serving Belial, the spirit. That, that they're possessed with the other spirit. And it's causing them driving them towards serving the life instead of our heavenly father. So even in the Greek, in the, New, in the second Corinthians, it was a liar. So that's the same, same guy. All right. But who was he called in the Old Testament? Bronze number H11, Eliyah Allah. From Bibi or Zeal, without profit, worthless, or extension, destruction, wickedness, usage, belial, evil, naughty, ungodly, wicked, translated, wicked, scandals, worthless, ungodly, perverted, rebel, scandal, worthless, rebel. That one there has a T instead of a reference and says worshippers. So they're hiding it. They're hiding. They won't give you, won't even give you a reference to who this character is, right. as the whole world is serving. All right. So we're coming out of the apocalypse of Elijah, and this is verse forty-one. He says, "In those days, the lawless one will appear in the holy places." Now, based on what we learned so far, what does this mean? The lawless one will appear in the holy places. 
when, when we've done classes that we're not necessarily talking about a brick and mortar temple. The holy places are our consciousness, our mind, our spirituality, our temple, our inner temple. He says, in those days, the kings of the Persians will hasten and they will stand to fight with the kings of Assyria. Four kings will fight with three. They will spend three years in that place until they carry off the wealth of the temple, which is in that place. And then it says, in those days, blood will flow from Cost to Memphis, the river of Egypt will become blood and they will not be able to drink from it for three days. Woe to Egypt and those who are in it. In those days, a king will arise in a city which is called the city of the sun. And the whole land will be disturbed. He will flee to Memphis with the Persians. So. Now, see, this is why we're able to make this connection throughout history. If you say, who is this person they're talking about? It depends on what school you went to. If you went to Harvard or somewhere, you know that this is talking about Antiochus Epiphanes. Or somewhere you may be thinking this is talking about uh, Constantine. But you could pick a lot of people throughout history. This is just the Antichrist. This is a government official. Some dude that, you know, has the power to steer a whole government into this, not just his own family, but everybody. In the sixth year, the Persians will plot and ambush in Memphis. They will kill the Assyrians. The Persians will take vengeance on the land and they will command it to kill all the heathen and the lawless ones. They will command to build the temple of the saints. They will give double gifts to the house of God. They will say the name of God is one. The whole land will hail the Persians. The Persians are the Iranians. See, this is the people who had like, you know, they got some ancient wisdom too. You know, the books that we be even scared to, you know, even look at. Zoroaster, all that kind of stuff. We ain't never, you know, some kind of books are on a different level. So it says, in the sixth year, the Persian kings will plot an ambush in Memphis. They will kill the Assyrian king. So you have to understand that the Assyrians king is like the, the they're like descendants, but like Nebuchadnezzar was like a cousin. He was related. If you can tra trace his bloodline back to, to Israel, you know. His mama might, his mama was, might have been from over yonder, but yeah. But now you have the Persians. They different. So now they comes up, the Persians will take vengeance on the land and they will command to kill all the heathen and the lawless ones. See, now see, like I said, this happens throughout history. They will command to build the temples of the saints, the temples of the saints. That's weird. It's supposed to be the temple of our father, right? But they build in temples of the saints. They will give double gifts to the house of God. We find out later that these are worthless gifts. They will say the name of God is one. Now, these name of God is one is real interesting because you could prove in the Bible that his name is one. Well, matter of fact, should I try it? Just go in and do a search for one. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Our God is one Lord. Our For there is one God. There is one that seeketh justice. But now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. So it says God is one. You can pull it from right there. They have a hard time. 
Even the remnant who did not die under the afflictions will say, The Lord has sent us a righteous king so that the land will not become a desert. He will command that no royal matter be presented for three years and six months. The land will be full of good and in an abundant well-being. You're having an event that shakes the world. Now everybody needs a king to help them. So you have this particular king that rises to help them. But it says even the remnant, the ones who were keeping the law that survived, they're going to believe in the king too. Saying that the Lord has sent a righteous king so that the land will not become a desert. He will command that no royal matter will be presented for three years and six months. So it's like one presidency. Those who are alive will go to those who are dead, saying, rise up and be with us in this rest. Well, oh, and or even think not necessarily going to the grave, but even thinking about your parents and or saying, I wish they could have been here at this time. So called good and peaceful. Okay, I guess. Yeah, so everything is going great. But then in the next chapter, it looks like chapter three it says, In the fourth year of that king, the son of lawlessness will appear, saying, I am the Christ. Although he is not, don't believe him. So this spirit is going to take over after three and a half years of plenty. Good. And then a spirit of lawlessness takes him over. And all of a sudden he's going to say that he the Christ. Which Christ is the wrong word. Um, Messiah. I'm gonna show up saying he the Messiah, he the Savior. Don't believe him. When the Christ comes, he will come in a manner of a covey of doves with the crown of doves surrounding him. He will walk up on the heavens vaults with the signs of the cross leading him. The sign of the cross is going to be what we see in the sky. It's the mark, the top. We're actually going to literally see it up in the heavens. And so that's what he's saying. Don't we believe in no man? Be looking. That's what it means by look up. Because you'll know it's here when you actually see the sign in the sky. Even the blind people will be able to see it. The whole world will behold him like the sun with signs from the eastern horizon to the western. Like a flash. Even described as a blue flash that's supposed to come across the sky, east to the west. This is how he will come with all his angels surrounding him. These are all the, the good spirits that's supposed to come help through this. I was thinking on this earlier that this is why it ha this happens. We have this so-called Shekinah glory is because this lawless one appears. And if it wasn't for our father bringing his divine help, we wouldn't stand a chance because like it even says up there, even the remnant. Will put their faith in this person. It says, but the son of lawlessness will begin to stand again in the holy places. So even after this event, so you have this, our Messiah showing up, come across the sky like we were told. It says, even after this, then this son of lawlessness, so it ain't going to be over. The thing about it, will be in the age of spirituality then because even this guy's going to have these powers. L listen to what he'll be able to do. He says, he will say to the sun, fall, and it will fall. He will say, shine, and it will do it. He will say, darken, and it will do it. He will say to the moon, become bloody, and it will do it. He will go forth with them from the sky. He will walk upon the sea and rivers as upon dry land. He will cause the lame to walk. He will cause the deaf to hear. He will cause the dumb to speak. He will cause the blind to see. The lepers he will cleanse. The ill he will heal. The demons he will cast out. So he will have all of the promises that everybody's, you know, all of the remnant is supposed to get. He'll have those too. Healing, 
spiritual community. Hmm? Yeah, a lot of people think that. That's why they was, you know, looking at the uh, president at one time. President Baraka. I mean, bless you. Baraka. That's why they were sticking that he was. I was just like a uh, Hebrew connection. But this is talking about the lawless one. So we're talking in this video, we're talking about the lawless one being revealed. And so we see who he is, but we see the alternative. We have our Messiah coming. And then again, we see what this guy is going to do. He's going to have this power. And that's why it's important to understand this text, because a lot of people are going to be fooled when they see him performing these miracles, even commanding the sun to move or this or that. He will multiply his signs and his wonders in the presence of everyone. He will do the works which the Christ did, except for raising the dead alone. So he's going to be exalted. He's going to be able to perform miracles similar to our Messiah, which is going to fool a lot of people. But he says here that the one thing he won't be able to do is to raise the dead. And then it says, and this you will know that he is the son of lawlessness because he is unable to give life. So we have this person who takes on this spirit and is able to perform this miracle to where, you know, he even thinks he's Christ, the Messiah. And a lot of people also think he is, too, because he's able to do these miracles. And it says the only way you're going to know is to have a dead body and say, you know, OK, sir, if you're truly the one. We're going to have to see you raise grandma or, you know, something like that. Oh, you know what it would probably be? Somebody will have a heart attack at his event. And they'll say, sir, you're the one. You're supposed to be able to raise him from the dead. And they're on television. He'll be trying to raise a dead body. Or else, well, he'll show himself like that. I would think he would show himself like that. He would put himself in that situation because he knows. So then. He's not, you know. He's that person, so he would never put himself in that position where he's called upon to do this. Hey, boss, here's an example. Come and show us your power. Show us that you're truly the one. And, and the fact that he won't, even if he tried, he won't be able to do it. Because only one could, could do that. In this, you will know that he is the son of lawlessness because he is unable to give life. And it's interesting that the last letter in our Messiah's name is the Nawan, the letter for life. For behold, I will tell you his signs so that you may know him. And they cut this part out. It, it, got, it tells us the signs, but you see there's a dot, 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 like something has been removed. So it's actually somebody knows the description of this guy. The only thing it really says in this particular translation, it says he is a dot, dot, dot of a skinny legged young lad having a tuft of gray hair at the front of his bald head. So he has a bald head and he has some hair on the front of his bald head. Like a toupee. Oh, tuft. They say a tuft of, of I don't know. And he's skinny legged. The other one talked about his eyes. There's another translation. No, maybe this one does. Let's see. His eyebrows will reach to his ears. There is a leprous bare spot on the front of his hands. So this describes. He will transform himself, but it, but, it, but again, is missing something. So you don't, may not even understand this, what he's telling us. He will transform himself in the presence of those who see him. He will become a young lad. He will become old. It could very well be through the power of television. An elderly person in the next minute, he looks like a young person for their eyes. Because he's able to transform himself in their presence. He will transform himself in every sign, but the signs of his head will not be able to change. So when he does these miracles, he's going to be able to change, but he's still going to have this tuft of hair. Therein you will know that he is the son of lawlessness. So you have this spirit of lawlessness. So this is the way it works. 
you let me add let me add everything I think I know. And I said think because you know, I'm trying to fill in some of the blanks and may go overboard. But so you have the spirit that comes across the world. We understand that the Shekinah spirit comes to help because of the negative spirit. So you have this negative spirit that comes across the world. In this negative spirit, you have lawlessness where we learn in Thessalonians that people who reject the truth or reject our father ends up with this lawless spirit. And in doing so, there's a king who is served by this particular spirit gives them power and is able to drive large number of peoples into serving pagan holidays, which actually severs the connection when you think about it. So the person starts off maybe a little bit wishy-washy and because of this spirit, they actually go through the whole process of severing the connection with our father altogether. But we learn that this spirit is also removed, like this goes on for a time. And then at one time, the restrainer is removed and this lawless spirit goes away. And then it says that it exposes Satan. And this reminds me of, you know, some of the prophecies, um, even in the book of Revelation, where the beast turns on the dragon. So now after this restrainer has been removed, and so now people are no longer under this spirit of lawlessness, start to understand the truth, but then I also see that the head spirit, Belial, is daring about, and there are still those who are loyal to this spirit. Then they then turn on these as recognizing this is, you know, really satanic, really, like it says, they're going to recognize it as being what it truly is. And so the world will then turn on the dragon to destroy the dragon to be a part of the process of removing the dragon from the earth. And I guess we live happily ever after. Without the dragon ruling over us. Well, that's what I got out of it. I'll tell us down in the comments section what y'all got out of it. And we'll see you down there. Peace and safety into y'all.